Dan, first of all, I'm I'm so glad. I, I told Angel, I was like, yeah, I get to talk to my kettlebell dad. <laughs> and I, I, I so I so enjoy talking to you. It's just uh you know, I, I had I've had so many great folks on on the pod, but with mm -hmm. you there's something I, I, I can't quite pinpoint it. I'm I just I feel that you're like my original mentor. I I I've taken so many things from you. I, I took it into practice. For example, we used to coach the the exercises with a lot a lot of detail and 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 then the here come the the drills and stuff and now i've started incorporating frankenstein's monster where i'm like hey if you understand the movement no need to go any further and it works wonders it's like it's 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 so it's so powerful yeah let the, i mean it's like trying to t once someone's typing if you keep trying to teach them while they're typing they're not going to type very well. Yeah, I love typing as a metaphor for weightlifting because it, when I say that, it's like if you were if you had someone. Okay, so my hands are on the screen uh, on the on the keyboard. If I had someone correcting my finger placement, I, nothing good on the screen would come up. Not you wouldn't be able to read anything I typed. Mm -hmm. And that's how we train most people. There's a time and place for coaching, but most of the time, good coaching is this. Hmm. all right let's get started yeah yeah we're, we're already getting started oh okay it's, it's, yeah i'm always so fascinated with this idea that and you know i'm a very talkative person so i'm trying to dial it down oh, yeah. and i'm to, to a certain degree i mean some of it is my nature but i'm clearly distinguishing now oh, i'm trying i'm trying to distinguish the coaching and cueing to to Stuff. i the my my daughter does an imitation of me coaching. Let me see if I can do most of it. Okay, ready? Ready? It's this. Because it's very clear to her and everybody else, I want to say something, but I'm literally holding my mouth shut <laughs> and trying to stop my body from uh, adding things. Yeah. Oh, and the, the, you know, I see it in practice. It's when you let people go, you know, I'm, I'm, and I'm a very motivating person. So I got that from my, it's also my nature. And so I'm trying to keep my, my, my cues and my, my inputs short and brief. And, and, and sometimes like they, they're working out and then they start talking of like, put it down, stop. You just keep going. We start talking when the set is finished. And it's weird. Uh, I, I always joke I'm about to upset 51% of the world's population, but many women like to talk while they f are learning how to weightlift. Mm -hmm. They want to have a conversation. And mm -hmm. what's interesting is that when when they move beyond uh, when they move beyond having to have a dialogue with the coach or the trainer or the person standing next to them, mm -hmm. that's when they learn tension and relaxation that's when they learn how to ramp things up and that's when i think you see the best that's where you start to see those that weird kind of uh, you know how progress seems to have improvement seems to have weird you know dips and dives mm -hmm. and ups and downs mm -hmm. when when people stop trying to dialogue while they're lifting is when they improve <coughs> sorry bless you gesundheit Thank gesundheit you. <laughs> yeah and what I see as well is this improvement of just um, I, I've talked to Bill S recently and he talked about the idea when you're swinging and cleaning and snatching the lumbo pelvic rhythm and how how swinging and, and the ballistics are, are, are rhythm based and and once you got your breathing in once the technique sits in then it's like a trance right you, you just keep going and and whenever I, I also stopped, um, and and this is one of my big problems that I had is like you want you want the the client or the member to do the rep perfectly. You see so many mistakes, then you start, hey, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's not good, blah blah blah, and then they feel like, oh, I can't do anything, so I've stopped doing this. I'm like, hey, just focus on one thing, just focus on the hinge. Don't think about the breathing. This comes automatically. We can focus on breathing when you're when you're tight with the movement. And that works wonders. It's just that simplicity approach. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is like, you know, we have a saying in discus throwing, uh, I said it was simple, not easy. So oh. discus throwing is very simple. 
kettlebell swing is very simple. But just because something in life is simple doesn't mean you... And, but I imagine if you were in the art of making love and you had your sex coach, you know, sitting there next to you saying, uh, you know, more, you know, more of a finish, your rhythm's bad. You need to, you know, get those toes digging in. Uh, you know, what's wrong with a kiss? Is there something wrong with kissing? You know, you know, it'd be nice if you said something nice. You know, as a male, you would have a reaction to this that isn't helpful. You would probably find yourself, uh, let's say, shrinking uh, yeah. to the to the to the to the <laughs> task. And the, and I, and, and we it. see, but there's not any area of life where this isn't true. Uh, you know, and think about the cliches: uh, too many cooks spoil the broth. Uh, you know, and and there's, I'm sure there's a lot more cliches. Just none of them came to my mind right now. But this idea in every field, there's this idea where you can do too much. Mm -hmm. uh, I've team taught classes, uh, academic classes. And the best that I've ever done is when uh, Gabriel Colosimo and I team taught uh, uh, Western, a Western civilization class where I taught the large lectures. Uh, like, uh, let's say on week one, I taught the big lecture mm -hmm. and then he would teach the three small groups the next time. Then he taught the big lecture and I would teach the three sm small groups. Mm -hmm. And what was great about that <clears throat> is that we were saying the same things, but it was that whole part, whole part, whole part method. Mm -hmm. So you learn the, so I'm a big believer that in the discus throw, I'm going to teach you the whole throw first, and then I'm going to break it into parts. I'm going to go back to the whole throw, break it down again, go back mm -hmm. to the whole throw. When I teach kettlebell swing, I show you kettlebell swing. You may, and it can happen, do it perfectly the first time, but mm -hmm. maybe there's a drill or regression you need. Mm -hmm. Back to the swing, regression, swing, regression, swing, mm -hmm. regression. When you work with somebody else, I think it's important to let person A make the big point. We break it down. Let person B make a big point. We break it down. And I, and I just think it's the correct way to teach. It's the correct way to coach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so it's understanding that yes, details do matter, and yes, you need mm -hmm. to you need to see the big picture. You need to understand the, the the full scope of whatever it is, the exercise or whatever. But then, when it comes to breaking it down or even applying it, then it's short bits, right? And 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 then maybe going back to to the big thing because and that's actually one of my questions um do you Go think ahead. that complex training regimes because we always talk about basics right basics and the fundamentals and and how we can always progress and th that's even a question that that a beginner asks him or herself is like do i need complex complicated training regimens to advance get leaner be the strongest i can be or whatever you know i'm actually in the process of writing a, an article for the website and what i'm doing is i'm taking a so the week before i was born the the artist who draw he's a famous bodybuilding caricature his name is bosco and the guy the mm -hmm. artist died just and bosco had basically a, a v shape like uh, this mm -hmm. huge saucy mustache and he mm -hmm. would you know and the bosco training system was very simple and uh, I have an art. I just found an article that I've had since 1973, and I just I didn't notice it. But when I started looking at it, I realized that this workout was a a takeoff of the Bosco program from the 1940s, 50s. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about it, and I realized that that is the first program I ever did. And and and, and I guess from uh, what I'm what I'm trying to say is. If I gave you a training program from Bosco, let's just say, I'm just spitballing here, but let's just say it was a 1948 training program. Uh, you, did, uh, you did curl, bench press, deadlift, squat. Uh, you warmed up with snatches. Um, and there was, oh, there was an abdominal exercise. Would you make progress on that? Well, hell yeah, you would make progress on it. Mm -hmm. Dave Davis in 1974 said that you just need to mix the Olympic lifts and the power lifts and all your dreams come true. And I, I mean, I would probably say, well, it'd be great if you did hill sprints and pharma walks too, but 
I get your point. Mm-hmm. Um, the mistake we make when we talk about what well, I'm, I'm going to defend simpler programs first and then go to your point is that people often miss that a simple program. So I'm going to have you do snatch and clean and jerk front squat and farmer walk in a workout. Now that's very simple workout, Mm -hmm. but by the time you're finished, you're going to be very hungry and you're going to sleep very well that night. Uh, You'll need a full extra day of rest. You'll, you'll have to go Monday, Wednesday, Friday or something like that on it Mm -hmm. because, but here's the thing though. It's magnificently simple. Now, the problem is when people get these complex workouts and there's this new thing now where they they give you like 10 different zones to train in. And I'm not just talking about on the cardiovascular side. They're doing this now on mm-hmm. the weightlifting side mm-hmm. where you need to do a total of 35 reps with 60% to 64%. Well, well, first off, I looked at that and I thought, well, what the hell is 60%? Mm-hmm. What does 60% mean? My best lifts... I can't do in my prime in a normal workout. I couldn't do 90% of my best in a workout mm. because I had to be on the platform. To mm, get that yeah, yeah. The, the additional, the lights, the action, the competition mm-hmm. vibe, right? That, that gets you to perform the best. So what the hell? So my first question on these complex programs, what the hell does 60% mean? And what does these zones that you're making up these, they're literally just making up numbers and it looks really good. When you look at it, we're going to do, eight sets of two and zone three at, you know, at a cadence of three, two, four with a rest period of 94 seconds. That's all great, Mm. but it's all crap. (laughs) You know, you're, you're going to spend so much of your mental energy, your, your brain capacity, trying to your random access memory, trying to figure out, you know, it's like your when your computer slows down, most people just say one of the best things you do, just shut it down. And what I was told by a computer expert is just what shutting down your computer and turning it back on does is it shuts off all the background noise. Mm-hmm. It shuts off all those little programs you forgot you had on. Mm-hmm. It just mm-hmm. it just gives everything a fresh stop. <laughs> so if you're in the weight room and you're looking at the clock wall clock trying to figure out what 94 seconds is, so my best training now. Uh, I have a, on my phone, I have this, uh, it's called seconds pro and I, I get nothing. I use it as well. I use it as well. And Powerful. I just set it up and I set the work up out. And when the thing That's goes, boop, 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 that means I have to lift. That's good. That, same and here. after I go, after I Got hear it. boop, 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 You're done. I put the bar down and I wait for the next boop, boop, boop. Then I lift again. And the idea, you, you know is, what's, you know, what's great about the app, just as a, a small side note, you can, cho- you can choose the boxing as an audio. And then always on the remaining 10 seconds, you hear the knock. And then you know, oh, 10 seconds left. I love this. Oh. Yeah, you oh. can switch it in the audio. And then it's knock, knock, knock. Like boxing, right? When boxing, 10 seconds. Okay, I love this. Oh, it's such wow. a great cue. And then you know, oh, I got 10 seconds left. Yeah. So my workout yesterday was uh, sets of three in the squat snatch. Uh, every 35 seconds. 30 rounds so you know um that's a lot that's 90 snatches in probably 15 minutes now the load was very light i'm, mm-hmm. I'm doing it mm-hmm. i'm doing it uh i, I want to get my mobility up i want to, gentle mm-hmm. listener this isn't necessarily something you need to do i need to work my mobility i need to work a little bit of conditioning i have a weightlifting meet coming up and i want to i'm trying to get in shape love it again love it it's you still want to compete i love this <laughs> break the american record too <laughs> i love uh, it <laughs> that's the so, grind yeah so so sometimes when you have a complex program the program takes over what i consider the most important things and that's of course this is just western civilization 101 the fact that my mind my body my soul my spirit are all one and if my brain is so busy trying to figure out what is this thing i'm supposed to do what is that move i'm supposed to what is this thing if my brain is so taken up if my my ram is so taken up trying to just figure out what's next i'm not using my mind for what i should be doing is of course you know lock it out snap it boom hit this Mm -hmm. boom 
mm. drive the heels, boom, or what, you know, those active, stay tall, mm -hmm. you know, go, go, mm -hmm. go, you know, those phrases. Yeah. It's a hard lesson. Uh, it is a hard, hard lesson. And the problem is uh, it's a hard, very hard to sell too. I, uh, yeah. That's a big, that's the big, thing. you know, um, one mm. of my, one of my, I'm starting to say it's an axiom. I'm, I'm, I'm almost going to start saying it's a truth or a rule, but uh, I've for a long time told people, they'll, they'll ask me about diets and I'll say, what did you look like before your first diet? And I always, now I say, take a picture of yourself before your first diet. You'll never look that good again. Uh, now that's not necessarily true as my, my platform bodybuilders might be hearing that and going, that's BS. But in truth, from what I've seen in my life, <laughs> once you once you go on your first diet, you probably look as good as you're ever going to do. But if you learn as a child to eat veggies at every meal, mm -hmm. protein at every meal, and drink water as your, your water, and I'm, I'm drinking hot water for lemon right now, coffee, tea, you know, whatever. If you just learn the lessons of life, you know, you know, eat eat in a social gathering, have conversations, have a lot of colors in your meals, uh, mm -hmm. you know, load up mm -hmm. with, you know, eat soup, stews, salads, you know, fill yourself, go for a walk. You probably would never have to do and that simple set of things I just said is far better than some magic formula uh, in your fifties or sixties that you're trying to lose some body fat. Mm -hmm. um, there's some new research out that just basically says eating a bowl of soup before meals will do as much for your your body composition as almost anything else you eat you eat less calories when you eat soup before your meals and if it's you have something like basic, a, yeah. mm -hmm. if you have a veg so okay gentle listener i'm giving you a million dollar program before every meal you have to walk 10 minutes when you get in, you have to drink a glass of water and then you have to keep eat a cup of vegetable soup. And then I don't care what you do after that. So if you're eating five meals a day, that's 50 minutes of walking, five glasses of water and five bowls of soup. Trust me, that's a lot of damn soup, you mm -hmm. know? And so, but there's nothing sexy about that list, that, is there? That's what I always say when, when we are training as well with our clients because we started incorporating so much uh, more farmer's walk more uh, suitcase, uh, suitcase, farmer's walk with a single hand, uh, which I've learned are just, uh, uh, Stuart McGill alluded to and confirmed how, how powerful the single handed farmer's walk is a suitcase walk because it yeah, works. Who did he hear that from? From, from Stuart McGill, Dr. McGill. Yeah, who yeah. did Stuart McGill find this out of from? Oh, I don't know. He sh shared it with me. Because this, because the the cordatus lumborum, the QL yeah. muscle that helps so in Stu, stabilizing the hip. Yeah. Do you know the story? So Stu heard my work uh, was with me at a workshop, and he heard mm -hmm. me bragging about the suitcase carry so much with throwers and kickers, ah, and strikers. Ah. And he went up, and he went up and proved it. But then what Stu does so well, he took it a much better place, and discovered what, how wonderful it is for back rehab and all mm -hmm. those other things that we mm -hmm. need to have. Yeah. yeah. So what I like, so basically, if you talk to Stu, I mean, uh, Stu would tell you, if you have a back injury, you know, go for in his new book, uh, The Gift of Injury. He talks about going for a walk before every meal for back for back problems. Wow. Yeah. I'm telling you to go for a, a walk before every meal for body composition. For weight change. loss. Yeah. 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 Mm. Stu would recommend mm. suitcase carries for uh back to uh help the back get stronger and i'm recommending suitcase carry so you can knock people down or throw shit farther so uh it's interesting how that's why i love guys like Stu. Stu yeah. pulls so much out of me yeah. uh, so mentally awesome. yeah. and i like to think i've given back to Stu some too i'd really like to get your opinion on this idea that you know i i'm i'm very much on your side of being uh basics based so to speak okay the basics work for years so that's that's the something that you can trust because there's so much not only evidence but also experience behind it yet bill s shared some things with me from david Weck, where i was like 
sounds interesting to me. I watched a couple of videos and my initial reaction was like, I don't know. But And so my question to you is, do you think that sometimes even being a basic based guy that we are missing something if we look at stuff that's completely not basics, that's completely taken, uh, it's maybe, I don't know, maybe it's too advanced, I don't know. Should we avoid it and should we disregard it or should we listen and take it into account and say, well, there may be something to it. Maybe he, he or she discovered something new. 15 or 16 years ago, I would have agreed with you. We should look at it, you know, tinker with it, figure it out. Mm -hmm. Now I realize that that's, you know, what you're, what you do on that stuff is that you ignore the 99% of stuff that works and you're chasing the 1%. So what I'd much rather do is get the 99% that I know is protein, veggies, water, push, pull, hinge, squat, loaded, carry, run some hills, uh, fast, uh, sleep eight, nine hours and meditate. Beat that. Beat that with all this bullshit you're telling me. Beat it. No, I'm serious. Yeah. You bring your athletes who are doing uh, rotary swings uh, on BOSU balls against my athletes. Every single one of my athletes who are 15 years old cleans 95 kilos, benches 95 kilos, front squats. Nine. The weakest kid I have. And you're, you're having kids do uh, rotational kettlebell swings on a BOSU ball. Who's going to win? We're going to win. We're going to knock you on your ass up and down the field of play. Now, your videos are going to look better than my videos. They're going to look a lot cooler. And I, pr you'll probably even make more money than I will. But you better, you better save all that money because you're like a shooting star. You burn out quick. How do you say shooting star? What's a, what's a shooting star in German? Mm, probably a comet. No, no, comets that long, slow tail. Yep. What's the ones that go <laughs> quick, quick? Yeah, shooting star. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a it's a comet. No. Or, or let me let me think. Let me think. Uh, the comet is, is is the Halley's comet. Halley's yeah, the Halley's. You know, um, how do how do we? Um, man, I'm um, yeah, but I know I know I know what you mean. It's the comet. No, it's not. Yeah. So here uh, here yeah. in Utah yeah. in the summer, uh, the in the in the desert it's so clear you can see this the sky goes mm, let me let me let me just sit sit there real quick because i'm you know, the funny thing is when i'm in, in english mode sometimes i i get lost for for, for the words ah yo klar. Uh, uh, klar of course sternschnuppe yeah say it again sternschnuppe schnuppe yeah stern that's the german word for star Schnuppe. <laughs> yeah. Stel Schnuppe. Stel yeah, Schnuppe. So yes. You're a bunch of Stel Schnuppies. <laughs> I love that. You guys are a bunch of Stel Schnuppies. That's it. And it's fine. So, and if yeah. you want to be a Stel yeah. Schnuppist, that's the greatest thing in the world. No, Stel. From Steller. Yes. That's an ancient word. Yeah. Mm, Stel yeah. Schnuppe. Yeah. So, so here you are, and you're going to, and, and everyone's going to talk about you. I mean, here in the States, there was a guy 10 years ago who was basically having his athletes dropping weights on his on their chest and bouncing them up. And he had one athlete who made it big and all of a sudden everyone wanted to know his secrets. You've never heard of him. You've never heard of him. 20 years ago, there was a guy who was, you know, came from the world of skateboarding and decided to become a, a strength coach. And all of his stuff was based on, you know, one my dog just uh, uh, no. <laughs> well, love, yeah dog farts are, well, are deadly they're lethal <laughs> yes. but uh, you know it was a skateboarder who decided to become an american football coach and everyone started doing all this stuff and, and none of it carried over you know i think about all the i mean i've just seen it happen too many times it's going to come down to the basics and it, 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 it's gonna you're gonna mix the olympic lifts you're gonna mix the power lifts you're going to do a little bit of, you know, uh, uh, bounding and skipping and hill sprints. It's yeah. that's what's going to get you great. 
um, had a nice talk with the uh, former American record holder in the discus the other day. Her name's Susie Powell. And whenever anything big happens in discus throwing, Susie and I will have these interesting long conversations. But we always kind of come back to the idea that we were we were doing that before. The thing I got best from Susie, she believes they should train you should train throwers like sprinters, mm-hmm. and I really like that. I made I actually attempted that years and years ago uh, with one of my athletes, and it worked well. Um, just basically training a training a thrower like you would train a sprinter. And uh, if you look at the Olympic gold medalist uh, Valerie Allman. Uh, she was, she has a dancer background, but I mean, she, it looks like she has a radically different way of looking at the event. And and the reason I bring this little thing up is that coach Ralph Mon told me in 1977, that basically we sprint across the ring. There's nothing new under the sun. It's just that, you know, well, there's the other thing, if you don't mind, Gregory, I mean, It's great that these people have all these opinions and crap and stuff, but prove it in track and field or prove it in swimming. Mm -hmm. Prove it. Yeah. No, I, you know, I, and I don't want to hear that you improve someone's flying 30 meter time. And I don't want to hear about their, I want to hear that their hundred meter time improved. Mm -hmm. They went from uh, long jumping uh, Mm -hmm. three meters to long Mm -hmm. jumping 10 meters, which would be a hell of a jump. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay. So, 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 yeah. So basically if, if I've just, um, putting this into my mind now, uh, yes, you're coming up with this great idea. You are coming up with these new ideas, which we have never heard of, which yeah. Interesting. Can you back it up with a specific data point? Let's say like swimming, you've improved this guy's crawl, uh, yeah. five point, point, point ten seconds or yeah. whatever. Hey, and, and swimming. Point one, the whole world's going to stop and listen to you because wow. swimming is just it's, so high at the it's, time. It, it's so Tra- mm. track and field. I mean, it, it, so if, it, if, if, if I'm understanding this correctly, if we are in such a competing environment or competitive environment where point one sex, well, point one second makes a hell of a deal, then I as an athlete, and my coach, we don't have time to waste. No, none, zero. And here's the other thing you gotta be careful of. I'm throwing the discus this way, and all of a sudden someone adds 10 meters to the world record by doing this thing, uh, I gotta change. I gotta get the videos, I have to watch what this athlete is doing, I have to throw out everything I knew before. Uh, we, we actually, we've seen it twice in, well, uh, I can almost do every event in track and field, uh, real quick, but when Dick Fosbury decided to come up to the, to the high jump bar this way and lead with his head instead of his foot, um, first thing that happened is the Brits, uh, did a study and they said it was very inefficient, but here's the funny thing. All the athletes said, well, he's the new world record holder and it's a easier, faster way to jump higher. Everybody does the Fosbury flop now. Everybody. In the shot put, there was a style called the glide. In fact, the German thrower does the glide. And But almost everybody at the Olympics in the men's side now does the rotation. Because they, even though the rotation and the glide were the same for a long time, some of these modern rotators figured out a small little thing. And now, now they're so much better than gliders. And the oh. small little thing, by the way, is to not throw it for height it's just to 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 wow basically changing so, the angle to a certain uh, well it, yeah it, the angle act here's the funny thing for a biomechanic guy they might not even see it but for wow. in our throwers it's like oh my god that night and day you know? <laughs> awesome yeah but here's another one um uh tom ecker proved uh, made a suggestion oh it must have been about 1973 that if long jumpers did a somersault in the air, they would go farther. So in the United States, a lot of okay-ish long jumpers started somersault. So, you know, uh, somersault, does that translate? uh, uh, It's a forward roll in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, forward roll in the air 
Uh, not, not touching the ground? Yeah. Yeah, forward salto. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I run down, I jump off the toe board, and I throw my head forward, yep. my legs flip yes. over. Yes, yes, salto, yeah, forward, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the funny thing, track and field banned it. Wow. But here's the interesting thing, by now, by now, it would be the standard of how everybody, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised with the world record in it's it's in feet but it, i wouldn't be surprised if the world record be a foot or more farther than it is now wow they banned it for the injury risk uh-huh mm -hmm. but here's the thing it's a sand pile and but yeah. what happens is oh, it, but so I, i guess what i'm saying is the moment e ecker suggested it athletes started doing it athletes started improving and they banned the technique That's why I love track and field is because if something works, you instantly adopt it because you and I don't have time to, uh, yeah. for someone I to prove it. I love this. So, and that's the problem with our world of fitness. I, I mean, it's a rare day. I don't find some bullshit on YouTube or some jackass pushing some just radically stupid ideas. Um, we, we had a great conversation today. Today's tonic Thursday. As, um, and so, so today we had an architect, uh, uh, you guys would probably call him a physio, uh, uh, mm -hmm. a, a therapist, uh, Mike Brown, who specializes in aged people and, and me. And we were discussing just while we're stretching and doing our mobility work. Uh, Mike was talking about how doing Pavel's program called the Rite of Passage is really hard on the QL muscles. Mm -hmm. And And we just started to talk about how it wouldn't be a terrible idea for us to get together and say, when, when you do a program like this, or when you do my big 21 program, certain problems, physical problems, I'm talking about, mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say injuries, but that whatever the level below injured is, uh, mm -hmm. nigglers, uh, you know, ouchies, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. The so inconveniences, right, of passage, huh? it, it, right? A passage mm. tends to make some people's QLs bark because there's so much one sided clean and press, clean and press. Uh, my knock on simple and sinister way too many uh single, single arm uh swings, which makes a lot of people and it would be the QL region. Uh, and and if I may just interject there, uh, Dan, I felt that. I do not have no problem with the kettlebell sports swing single-handed. I do not have a problem with this idea of the hybrid swing that I'm engaging where I'm just hinging, no explosive movements, but no pendulum leg action from the kettlebell sport. In heart style, using a lot of force, momentum, this ideology with single hand, this makes my left side itch to a certain degree where I feel like, ooh, I don't like this, but on the other side, totally fine. So I kind of ditched it and I'm sticking simple and sinister with both hands using a 48, yeah. very heavy weight. And, yeah, and, 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 and it's, and it's awesome. And if I go into single hand, I'm dialing down the weight and I'm not using as much force going into a different kind of swing more for, more for efficiency. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm mostly fit. And, and some people that I talked to on the podcast, they mentioned this as well, that sometimes the spine is flaring up a little bit, that, that there's something that feels. So I, I, hate single, I hate single arm swings. Yeah. And okay. So we, uh, we decided to put you on a program. And so one of the, the conversation was just like, Certain programs seem to have certain things. So uh, if you're going to do my mass made simple program, one of the things um, there are people who complain about the Christmas tree muscles in your lower back. Mm -hmm. So here's your spinal rector. Uh, it's that Christmas tree, those, those yeah. muscles. Yeah. And it's almost like the fascia fascia, mm -hmm. the fascia. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily like a muscle. It's like, mm. it just aches. Okay. Well, yeah, because you just did 50 squats with your body weight on your back. Yeah, it makes sense that all that pressure for so long on that mm -hmm. lower back. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you decide to do some kind of super duper push up program, uh, most of the people I know are going to have issues, right? Right. Whatever the hell that is. But, you know, when you stick, if someone's never bench pressed before, the next day you stick your finger and you roll it around and they, uh -huh. they fall on the ground. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Whatever that spot is, yeah. uh, it's where like 20, 20 different muscles all decide to 
to, to interact right to there. hang around with each other yeah <laughs> if you decide to do a, a tricep you know specialization program the ends of your elbows might hurt uh you mess around too much with the biceps you can get that you know that crook in on this side um you could blow your you know there are certain things you can do that'll blow your achilles tendon off um and, uh, and i'm just saying we'd be not, we, we had this idea of so here's the workout here's the problem that associated the workout here's the cure as part of the program so if you're going to have issues in simple and center uh rite of passage i don't know mm -hmm. simple uh with rite of passage there's going to be some ql barking well i'm going to add suitcase carries and uh we call it the figure four stretch here in the united states mm -hmm. i don't know what else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's a it's a Olympics, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a mm -hmm. QL stretch that yeah, we're doing. Yeah. I'm sort of doing it right now, uh, like I'm pretending I'm on the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you build into the rite of passage, suitcase carry superset it with the figure four, three or four rounds at the end of every workout. Mm -hmm. So you throw in a, a toughening, strengthening exercise and a mobility, flexibility exercise mm -hmm. to counter a problem because a lot of people get the problem. And, I, mm. and I'm spitballing this right now because my mind is thinking that this is really, really a good idea. And and then that's that's one of those big reasons why, and I'm, I, gotta, I gotta set this up, uh, what I'm trying to say. So many people are, are telling me that these reactions that we're doing, these, these reviews where I'm giving uh, proper and, and educated feedback on kettlebell exercises, and, and workouts people are like wow this helps me and benefits so much because through the eyes of the coach through your eyes i get to understand what the beneficial the benefits are of the kettlebell and it's most differentiating factor and then i see that some people or maybe most influencers in certain cases never tap into that potential because they don't know how to use the tool and so that's one of the big reasons why i'm so um big on you for example commenting on simple and sinister and saying hey it may be the single-handed swings may be tough on your on your back maybe stick with the double-handed and i think it's 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 this this climate that we live in that if somebody gives critique or feedback how can dan john critique simple and sinister he worked with pavel blah 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 and i think that's total crap i think it's just we're adding to the evidence-based level of knowledge that we have and that doesn't make simple and sinister bad no, it it, but, it that's why it's so important that you are commenting on this yeah. right and so i'm so happy that you're sharing this because i kind of felt it and maybe some people that are now watching this is oh i feel it but that doesn't make the program bad right well we got a guy at my gym uh he, he doesn't because of his work schedule change and i haven't seen him in a bit but he's a good dude and he dropped a 40 kilo bell onto his rib cage doing the heavy Turkish getup. Mm -hmm. And I keep telling people uh, that the heavy Turkish getup, uh, it can kill you. Uh, like the bench press, it, it can kill you. And I get a lot of pushback on that. You better know why you're doing freaking heavy Turkish getups. You'd be able to prove to me mm -hmm. because I don't think death is worth it. Mm -hmm. to and, and and no offense but who are you going to impress mm -hmm. i mean do you really think auto arco um uh, auto arco is more famous than all of our listeners think he was uh if uh, uh you ever heard of the the statue called the thinker mm -hmm. yeah that's rodin that's, or uh, rodan uh, depending on where, what day of the week it is mm -hmm. uh auto arco arco yeah you know was his uh model and all arco had to bodybuild was a single barbell and so he built That's himself it. up at, at a body weight of 60 kilos he was able to use a 70 kilo barbell doing the turkish get it wow with a barbell so you know massively strong oh. you know it's all yeah, yeah almost that complete yeah. changes the game the dynamics now, when i say when i say if you want to impress me in a turkish get up you know, auto arco that bitch, you know, take, uh, take 10, 20, 30 kilos over your body weight and do one with a barbell. And, uh, I just, but I don't want you to, but it just, mm. and so 
and this happened over over a hundred years ago. So I haven't been impressed by a Turkish getup in 110 years. So mm. I'm not going to be impressed by the fact that you videotape yourself using mm. the, a 24. I don't care. <laughs> and it's so funny that you're mentioning this because I uh, I I did uh, with Angie. I got the 40 kg, and I tried a Turkish getup. Failed on the left side, but I managed it on the right side. And then people were asking me this, and then somebody sent me this comment like, "But Dan John, Dan John is against heavy Turkish getups." And I was like, "Yeah," and he's totally right. So why, <laughs> so, so why are you doing it then? I was, I was, I'm doing it for me because I love the exercise and I just try to, I, I got the 40 kg. I want to do it. I like it, but yeah. I felt like, okay, um, 40. And then people were like, well, how, what are what system are you now going to use to bring up your left side to do it? I'm like, no system, but why? Because I don't care. I just tried it. I messed it up. Okay. Let's go back to my squats and my swings and my presses. I just, I just. Gave it a shot, right? Okay. My goal in uh, February is to break the American records in, in uh, the snatch and clean and jerk in my mm. in my class. Mm. Why? Well, hell, I don't know why, because it's it's there. It's like Mount Him. It's like the Himalayas, baby. It's like you know, it's K two or whatever. <laughs> yes. you know? And uh, I I can't defend why I, I want to go. I'm gonna I'm I'm flying down to Phoenix. I'm staying at the courtyard by Marriott. Um, I'm going to probably miss the first part of the Super Bowl. I'm going to, uh, I mean, there's all these little check marks as I go yeah. down about all these things I'm going to miss. Uh, why am I going to probably end up spending uh, probably about $2,000 mm. to take six lifts on a platform in mm. front of judges? Mm. Why? I don't know. Mm. Uh, uh, gentle listener, did I tell any of you that you should? No, it's so this is the thing okay so this is our we're going right back to our first time we met health is the optimal interplay of the human organs you go to doctors fitness is the ability to do a task longevity is a quality and quantity issue i want the longest health span i can have and if it's a long lifespan well good for me too and then there's performance mm -hmm. i live in performance sports and that's where i make all my money Love it. How well can uh, how well can a sniper snipe? How well can a thrower throw? How well can a kicker kick? That's that's, that's what, what I do for is. a living. Mm. But the other three, health, the ability to do tasks, fitness, and longevity, for most of our listeners, they need to listen to those. For health, man, uh, I get up every day, I scrape my tongue, I take coconut uh, and I swirl it around, spit it out into a garbage can. By the way. Don't put it in your plumbing, it'll stick. I floss my teeth. Mm -hmm. I brush my teeth with an electric toothbrush because it's mm -hmm. gentler on your teeth. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that, I take some alcohol-free mouthwash, rinse yeah. it out, and spit it out. That's I it. do that two times a day. That's not to lift more weights in the platform. That's for my health, and that's for my longevity. Um, wow. I just had my first meal of the day after my, my mobility workout. I ate a massive bowl of vegetable soup with kimchi, with fresh kimchi in it, or whatever. I guess fresh isn't it? It's a it's a sauerkraut. Uh, mm -hmm. It's Korean sauerkraut. sauerkraut. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. same word in German. Yeah, love it. Okay, and then I had some hummus with it too. Mm. Hummus and just some pita bread. Not a lot of pita bread. Mm. And I don't eat. That is not going to make me snatch. You know, 142 kilos again. That's not, I don't eat the vegetables for that. Mm -hmm. I eat it so that I'll, for my health mm -hmm. and my longevity. Mm -hmm. uh, today I did uh, mobility. I do that for my fitness mm -hmm. so I can be fit to do the I job as a father and grandfather. So I can be around long enough to play with my grandchildren. And the mobility will help me as an Olympic lifter. So what you need to do at some level is you got to have to take those four ideas, health, fitness, longevity, performance. A lot of your list. Oh, and you could even throw in how I look in the mirror. Vanity. We'll throw vanity. In. Vanity. All right. And I got no mm. issues with vanity. Yep. I got no issues with yep. it. Uh, mm -hmm. Mark Devaney's famous line, vanity is a great reason to train after 60. I you just it. want to look good. Love and it. I like that. What you need to do is you can take those five things and you got to make sure you click the boxes on at least a couple of them. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you do a heavy Turkish getup performance, by the way, heavy Turkish getups help Otto Arco look good, 
but he did them with 20, you know, 10, 20 kilos over his body weight. So, you know, there's the a vanity. <laughs> yeah. there might be a better way to do vanity than mm. Turkish get up. So mm -hmm. that's a performance. Mm. If it smashes your side of your rib cage and breaks something, that's going to mess with your health, your mm -hmm. fitness, your longevity, and how you look the rest of your life. So that's a tough pillar to stand on by I love itself. This. I love it. So wow. I'm Dan John. I'm 64 years old. Actually, technically, on uh, January 1st, as a lifter, I become 65. So yay for me. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you still look great, by the way. Wow. Well, thanks. Awesome. Uh, so for my health, weightlifting, three, I Olympic lift three days a week. I do kettlebells and Olympic lift mm. three days a week. Mm. I bodybuild Olympic lift kettlebells three days a week. I do mm. a serious mobility flexibility two days a week. Mm. Uh, I walk about 10 days a week. So I walk twice a day, several days. I strive for nine hours plus sleep. I Olympic lift. Is it good for my health to Olympic lift? Mm. Yeah, I, I'm thinking it would because it's exercise. For fitness, yeah, if you want a couch moved, you you ask me. Uh, if you need your mm. car pushed, mm. you ask me. Mm. Uh, for my longevity, I'm hoping it helps me live a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do. Uh, performance i'm gonna lift in a meet in yeah. february so yeah. for vanity i think the olympic lifts keep my waistline down keep my shoulders strong awesome keep my butt nice and high and perky wow you know so yeah so we have we have like, to so I'm gonna, if you don't mind yeah. i gotta write that down i think yeah i it's, think uh, i need to write yeah. you have I to, I to i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna edit this because what you said with these five spots these five fears i'm gonna edit this put it on ig uh, tag you in it because it's so powerful it's understanding that what sphere are you in or what what sphere is at your utmost priority and therefore accordingly you act well it's like those bodybuilders who say whoever dies in the biggest casket wins you know <laughs> you know wow yeah well, never heard and I got, here's the thing and i've said this before and i'm running um, a little tight on time um mm -hmm. I don't care if you take anabolic steroids and testosterone and inject yourself. I don't care. Just do me a favor. When you, if you do have long-term health issues, don't be a bitch about it. You decided to take these drugs to look better on the beach or lift more mm -hmm. weights or mm -hmm. throw the discus farther. Mm -hmm. You made that decision. No mm -hmm. one made you do it. Mm -hmm. So shut up later on when you have to pay the piper. Yeah, um, I'm point. so sick in my in, in this industry that we're in of how often I have to listen to somebody say, you know, uh, you know, yeah, I, 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 I sure regret taking those drugs. Well, if you regret it so much, uh, why don't you give those trophies back? Why don't you give, you know, call them, mm. you know, give them all back. Hey, mm. Gregory, I've got a thing at, at noon. Yes. Uh, it's kind of a cool thing. So I'll tell you real quick. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm given a, a lifetime uh, achievement award in strength and conditioning. You're, you're getting it. Yeah. So, so, Damn. and I'll give you the details as soon as I have the information. Okay. Uh, you, you uh, email to. me in a couple of days and I'll send you, I'll send maybe in the video. Okay. Yes. Dan, and that you deserve that 100%. Um, thank again for, for the final note. I thank you so much, Dan. I, I just want to say at the end, if you have anything that you want this young gentleman done for you, you just let me know because I owe you so much. I cannot even put it in words. Um, if you wouldn't mind uh, telling people about Dan John University and making most, sure, you know, most definitely, um, it would mean a lot to me, you know, because yeah. I, uh, uh, one of my goals is to really build that site up and uh, it would help me a lot. Awesome. Uh, I'm adding the fact this article will go up. This health, fitness, longevity, performance, and Powerful. vanity. In Powerful. fact, you know what? I'm going to turn this into a class. Awesome. I'll make this into a course. I'll make do. it a free course. You have to do it. I like that. I like that very much. I'm here, I'm here to support you on, on, on that regard. And, and, and that's just... It's, 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 um, f for a young lad like, like me getting the, these insights, I, I live like in dog years. One year is seven years sure, when it comes sure. to experience. Hey, my friend, we'll talk, tell you what, uh, call me next month. Let's do it again. I got to bounce though. Okay. Most I'm definitely. Sorry. No, I'm good. Thanks.
Thank you very so, much. Bye bye then. The world of kettlebells is dominated by two training styles called heart style and kettlebell sport. Although vastly different in nature, they have been proven to work and give you the most bang for your buck. Whenever you pick up a kettlebell, if you apply the technique correctly and are able to differentiate between the two. Now for beginners, this task might be understandably confusing. With our upcoming hybrid style masterclass in 100 lessons, you will embrace the emergence of the hybrid style movement where you will learn how to combine the best of both worlds and become a master at handling the kettlebell. Join the next revolution in kettlebell training now and sign up for our early birds list to stay up to date and receive an exclusive discount and release week. Link is in the description.